Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Tony Fergie. I want to thank all my subscribers. The old ones, the new ones, the ones that just keep coming back because you love what you hear and what you see. I want to share something with you guys before we get into that video. And the journey that took me to start looking for things like this video. I went running on Orchard Beach one, one day last year. And I went and for some reason I usually go by the water and I relax. And as it was coming to the end of my run, this guy approached me because I usually go in the back by the rocks. And I just go there and I just meditate. I just watch the waves. This guy approached me and he had a Bible in his hand. And he said to me, what are you doing? And I said, praying. And he said, okay, can I join you? And I said, sure. Of course, he sat down and he had the Bible. He opened us a little pocket Bible. He opened the Bible and he read something to himself and then he closed the Bible. And I said, you read the Bible, but you didn't share it with me so we can both know what we're praying for. So then he opens the Bible again and he said he was reading Romans 8. I would never forget. And he proceed to read something like maybe just one, one little verse in Romans 8. Can't remember what verse it was. And as he read it, he closed it up and I said, okay, what did you get from that? So he said, well, I get, and he explained himself. And I said to him, well, what I got from it, and I explained myself to him. So he said to me, where did you learn what you know? And I said, by reading and praying and asking our father for clearance and, you know, just clear vision. He said, okay. So I said to him, can I pray for you? And he said, sure. And as I began to pray, he started rocking back and forth, rocking back and forth. And I said to him, what is your name? He said, his name was Paul. Paul, wherever you are, my brother, I absolutely love you. And I want to thank you for this encounter. He said his name was Paul. And as I prayed for him, I called him Little Paul in the prayer. Okay, I was initiated to call him a Little Paul. And as I said it, he started somewhat crying, making like a crying sound. And at the end of my prayer, as most Christians or most followers of the Bible would, I said in Jesus name. The moment I said in Jesus name, he turned to me, he stood up. Now, because remember, we're bending on the rocks. He stood up over me and he said to me, Jesus is the devil of the world. And I froze. I was like, what did you just say? He said, Jesus is the devil of the world. And then he walked away from me. I immediately picked up the phone and I called my brother who's a pastor in Jamaica and I called him. And I said to him, bro, I just had an encounter. It's really, really weird, blah, blah, blah. And I'm talking to him. So then he said, where's the young man? And I said, he is walking like ahead of me. But then he turns around and he's coming back towards me. As he's coming back towards me, I was on the phone with my brother. So he said to me, who are you talking to? And I said, I'm talking to my brother. He's a pastor. So he said, okay. So then I started speaking in tongues. And he turned around and he walked away. My brother was on the phone with me. And my brother said, stay on the phone. Stay on the phone. I said, okay. Now this young man was trying to avoid me. I was trying to avoid him. Because it's like the way the beach is set up. You have that one long road. But then you can turn off and go behind where the tennis court is. And so on and so forth. Anyways, as me trying to avoid him, him trying to avoid me, sure enough, as I'm entering the parking lot, he's sitting on one of the benches not knowing what he should do. Like, he don't know if he should disappear, if he should walk away, if he, he didn't know what to do with himself. So, of course, I went to my car, spoke to my brother, went to my car, but it never stopped bugging me. So I started doing my own research. And I was like, why would this young man would say something like this? Like, who's Jesus? What's going on? 
And I started searching for myself. And then of course, I started discovering some things that I couldn't bring myself to believe or to come to terms with. Because how do you tell someone who's been praying to Jesus all her life that Jesus is a devil of this world? So, of course, I want you guys to watch this video. This video is educational for those who are willing to learn. If you're not willing to learn and you are super religious to the point where you don't want to learn anything else and you've done it all and there's nothing that anyone else can teach you, then by all means, this this video is not for you. But if you have lots of questions like I had when I was going to church and pastors would always tell me some things we have to leave until God comes back for him to answer. Now, I would like for you guys to be open-minded, listen to what this elder is teaching, and see if you can learn something from it. Watch this video and tell me. The lies on which Christianity has been built, the virgin birth, and God is worshiping one Jesus that never existed. And so we had a whole set of fake preachers preaching this nonsense to us, and boy, did we believe, we all did. The Immaculate Conception of Mary, followed by the Virgin Birth. See, the Virgin Birth hinges on the Immaculate Conception of Mary, meaning that Mary had no biological relationship with her mother and her father. She just happened to be the Mother of God, Holy Mother of God. We will see that Msindisi, the Bantu Savior, he had a mother and a father. And that the virgin birth story is about Jesus that never existed. The very fact that Jesus was spoken of and never existed means he never came, he was never born. The weaponization of the virgin birth. Matthew chapter 1 verse 18. Now the birth of Msindisi, and that's the Isikosa word that translates to Savior. It means Savior. It was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was married, I'm correcting as we go on, married to Joseph. But we shall examine all of these concepts tonight. According to Matthew chapter 1, in which is the story in the New Testament or the New Testament of Amen, recorded there is a story about this man, and his wife that give birth to a child. And you need to go back and look at the previous parts of the series where this child was born in the garden of Eden. In other words, he was born in the garden that Sonini Nanini planted in the east, in Mpomalanga, South Africa. I know when I'm talking here, the people of Mpomalanga might be saying, is he saying that the Messiah was born right here. He was born in the same space in which Sanini made Adam and then put him in the garden. Lucindacy was born in Zarata, which became, in the New Testament, Nazareth. He was born in the same space that Adam's calendar was in. In the city of Adam. See, when Sanini put Adam in the garden in, in Pumalanga that Kruger put his name on. Sunini knew that he would be referred to as second Adam born in the same garden. First Adam obeyed Satan. Second Adam obeyed Sunini Nanini. From the same space, a conception took place generations after born to a man and a woman, their biological child, born in the garden, conceived in the garden rather, born in Bethlehem on the south side of Jerusalem. Below Pretoria and Johannesburg. But who came back and lived in Zaratan or 
Nazareth in your New Testament. And everybody in the village knew him. This young boy was speaking the language of his parents, Isikosa. How are we able to find out all of these things? Like I would always remind you what was coded in the DNA. The DNA is a hard drive. It stores data that is put on it, transmitted onto it in files. And so, Abram, through his Saka and the Kobe, transmitted some information. And that information came down to this child that was born to this man and this woman. Don't get connected to the names. We'll sort the names out later. Swimming is doing it right now. And this man and this woman give birth to this child. And this child was supposed to, to grow up and lead his people back to the ways of Sunini Nani. And we got a very vivid example of who this child will be. When we saw in the Sudan, which was the land of Kush, which was Babylon. When Sunini Nanini wrote on the walls of Belshazzar, the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, the great great grandson of Nimrod, son of Cush. And he wrote a language up there that only Daniel, that came up from the south, came down from the south rather, into Babylonian captivity, was able to interpret. Today we know the language to be Isikosa. Mini mini tekeri yupansi. Why? Why is Sunini Nanini writing Isikosa? This also tells us that when he wrote on the tablets for Moses, he was writing Isikosa. And when this child was born in the garden in Zaratan, in Impumalanga, in the, the, the garden of, or the city of Adam, the Garden of Eden. This child grew up speaking Isikosa. At his death, he was still speaking Isikosa when he was murdered by the Romans, the Jews, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, in other words, the Sanhedrin, and the Greeks. He was still speaking Isikosa. How did we know that? Herod, uh, sorry, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, who was on the continent in Judea, south side of Jerusalem wrote the inscription in Latin representing the children of Latinus Pontius Pilate in Hebrew Israelite representing the Jews the scribes the Pharisees the sons of Cain through Goma Ashkenaz and the Greeks the children of Javan He wrote it there, the inscription that he put. Where these three murderers sign on to the murder of this black man in this black land. And people are asking, was the Romans in South Africa? Of course they were there. You think the Roman Empire didn't touch the continent? It did. In much the same way. As the Babylonian Empire did, in much the same way as the Assyrian Empire did. Persia, meet a Persia. As the Greek Empire did, they all knew where the Holy Land was. Let us read the scripture tonight. In verse 16 of chapter 1, it says, And a Kobe, notice I'm just dropping the J and pronouncing syllables. A Kobe begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born in Syndice, who was called the Savior, the Messiah. So all the generation or the descendants, the bearers of the DNA, all, so all the generation from Abraham to David, 
was 14 generations. That's 1,400 years, if you count the generation as 100 years. And from David unto the carrying away of Babylon, to Babylon, into Babylon, which is in East Africa, the Sudan, was another 14 generation. That's 2,800 years. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto the time when the Messiah was born, that's another 1,400 years. That's 4,200 4, years from Abraham to the birth of the Messiah. I'll leave that for a conversation for another time. And now the part of Msindisi was on this wise. Whereas his mother, I'm pausing there, was married to her fa the father before they came together or began to live in the same house and compound, she was found, the mother was found with a child or she became pregnant. I am appealing to your reasoning and reality. There ain't no young girl walking this road gets pregnant without the intervention of a male. They must be a male. The only confused people is the people that claim that they are more intelligent than the animals. They know not to do it. They follow Sonini's laws. And not even Lucifer they will allow. But man is allowing Lucifer to change his views. He's so intelligent that he's become a fool. Mary became pregnant. How did Mary get pregnant? Mary got pregnant because she's a married woman. Who is Mary married to? She is married to the man that they call Joseph. And so they got pregnant because they were married. And that they are male and female. You see why the nations are on a trajectory to try and encourage us to think that there is no more male and there is no more female. And you read it in the Bible. There is neither male nor female. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. There's neither bond or free. All of those things exist. Who is writing this thing? Or is somebody misunderstanding what has been written? But let's stick with the origin story. See, Mary got pregnant because Joseph knew her. And the Catholics got angry because the story they wanted to tell was a story that is similar to the fallen angels that came in and mated with women that were fitting extensions of their kind. And they produced offspring here. Fallen angels mated with women and produced beings that are directing us tonight. I want to repeat their story in the book. And they develop a problem. Because now the other book is open. The book that tells us that for a female, to give birth to a male child, she needs a Y chromosome that she don't have. So it hits the immaculate conception business of Mary out of the place. And it hits the virgin birth into problems. You need a Y chromosome from a biological male. I'm going to illustrate this as we go on. This is foundation tonight. You need a Y chromosome from a biological male. You can't get it from a female, another female. They don't carry this Y chromosome. It's passed from a male and it comes through and is deposited by a male via the sperm. And we are reminded of this in the plant kingdom. In the conversation about the stigma and the stigma, Ma received the sperm from the stigma, fertilizing it in the ovule, and give rise to a new seed from the egg that is fertilized by the spore. If the egg is not fertilized, 
by an act of the stay men men stay men men there can be no fertilization of the egg and don't think that you can take a stay men from another flower and use the pollens from there the pollen grains the sperm seed you need of the same kind you see it was easy for the seed of Cain when the fallen angels came down because they were of the same size Sam's variety if I can put it that way it was easy for the Neanderthals as well because it was the same variety some flower petals don't some flower um, pollen grains don't fertilize rose don't bring about rose flowers sunflowers can only produce sunflowers roses can only produce roses that's the the flower kingdom in the animal kingdom is the same and if you jump and do a wrong thing like mating a donkey with a horse you're gonna get a, a product that cannot reproduce itself the mule I come here and you can reproduce of your kind see when the Catholic Church developed this doctrine of the virgin birth their purpose was deception and to create a story that they own exclusive rights to and nobody as the, as the Pope said nobody can think that they can have a relationship with Jesus created by Rome and don't have the same relationship with Rome who created Jesus see normal mothers and fathers give birth to children male or female depending on the sperm that is released the di it's dictated by the male if you release a white chromosome that child is going to be a boy there's nothing the mother could do about it. When he releases an ex, a girl is going to be born. That's the reality. And so the problem with the Catholic Church, when they created this fake doctrine, they never conceived the moment when they were going to be exposed. And that moment is here. Show me the man that fathered Jesus because he can only come here if he receives biological material from a male unless you're telling me that we're having a conversation about a fallen angel impregnating women that's the Old Testament story of the fallen angels that came down and met him but as from Syndice, the Bantu man that was murdered on the continent by the Romans, the Greeks, and the Eastern Europeans, his father, his father received biological material from Abraham, Isaac, and the Kobe. Hence we read, and a Kobe we got Joseph. The husband of Mary, of whom out of that union was born Msindisi. See, Msindisi received the white chromosome from his father. Jesus could not receive because Jesus never existed. And so the story of Jesus is a story patterned after the fallen angel story. That's why you hear that a Holy Ghost was responsible. I read verse 18 again. We're laying foundations tonight. Now the birth of Msindisi was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was married 
to Joseph before they began to live in the same compound or after Joseph or before Joseph finished building the house in his father's compound Mary was found with child full stop not of a Holy Ghost see those ghosts those disembodied spirits the demon that possess people's body can only create fake pregnancies fake pregnancies I leave it for your consideration verse number 19 then Joseph now I want us to examine this logically now. then Joseph her husband but they said that they were not married they were exposed and people want to bring the European concept of engagement into this picture when in verse 18 she was exposed when in verse 19 she's now wife and Joseph her husband so the marriage is done that's how we know it was done and Joseph her husband so we know now Joseph and Mary were married so if jo Joseph Zechariah Mary that's normal that's very normal. Let's continue on in the conversation of the Romans. Being a just man is suggesting that Joseph is righteous and don't do wrong. But Mary is pregnant. And Joseph didn't do wrong because Joseph is the husband and the father. And the provider, being a just man, Rome continues, not willing to make a public example, is suggesting to us that Joseph thought that Mary did something that was wrong. Or Joseph thought that he and Mary did something wrong. This is, the con this is what is being conveyed by the Catholics. That Mary was found a child that was not Joseph's child. They can't take it when they get to see the kindness of Sunini Nani and they thought that they can corrupt it continuously. That Joseph, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example meaning that she was in the wrong. This is abuse, that she was in the wrong. What wrong did Mary do? Mary got married and Mary got pregnant. The Catholics couldn't take it like that because they are male and they go after males. So nothing will come. And so the suggestion that Joseph wanted not to make Mary a public spectacle or example, was working on a program to put her away quiet because she did wrong. It's the most wicked and vicious lie that the world has been subjected to. And people excuse the lie of Satan. They are excusing the lies of Satan by saying God can do anything even when Rome is lying it is God doing anything you can't come here as a male my mommy couldn't tell my daddy that he was a virgin born and then I look like the man and we look like the man minding to put her away quietly so that nobody knows that Mary did a wrong thing and out of a wrong thing came a good thing nonsense it's the same story of Joseph the same story of a Kobe a supplanter and a thief a vagabond Cain is transferring his nature wants to transfer his attributes onto a Kobe saying he stole birthright. He's a thief. 
and that Sunini likes the teeth. Here Joseph is saying, according to the Catholics, the children of Lucifer, is that Mary did a wrong and Joseph is going to right that wrong by putting her away quietly. When Joseph knows his baby, Joseph never had a plan like that. That's a plan of the Catholics. And I know you want proof. So there will be proof. The books are open. So Joseph is saying, my wife got pregnant by a Holy Ghost. And Mary saying, I don't know what happened. I just woke up and I found out that I was pregnant. Nonsense. Nonsense. Joseph not wanting to make her a public example? Nonsense, Rome. He planned to put her away privately? Foolishness. Verse 20 says, But why he thought on these things? He was thinking it and they were able to write it. You, you watch Rome. Watch Rome. Joseph apparently didn't voice his thoughts out, but Rome went into his mind. Why he thought on these things, Rome was writing his thoughts. Because it was Rome's thoughts. Okay, guys. What did you guys think? Does that mean Mary was the first artificial insemination? Hmm. The only time in the Bible I saw where an angel got a human being pregnant was in the book of Enoch because in the beginning during the days of Noah when they did it they were giants like I said you have to be open-minded pray for clarity pray pray and pray I've gotten to the point where I just stay by myself I've been studying, I've been studying the word, along with other books, just to get clarity. Because there's too many shadows in the answers that we're looking for. So, do your own. Don't forget, the same Bible said, seek and ye shall find. I wonder why it says that. The same Bible said, seek my face. I wonder why it said that. The Bible also says, knowledge will be given unto those who ask for it. Hmm, so would wisdom. Don't stop until you get the answers that our Father wants you to have, not what others want you to have. Let me thank you guys for coming back. Let me say Tony loves and appreciates you guys. Have a wonderful, awesome, and magnificent day. And know that Tony loves you guys.